Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. I'm having a super productive day, so I'm gonna bring you along for some DIY projects. Let's get started. Hey guys, so my name is Nicole and I have an antique booth called Green Onion Vintage. It is a booth that I do with my mom and we are always looking for things to upcycle and sell for a profit in our booth. So we have a variety of antiques and handmade goods. And you guys have seen me thrift shopping before and just looking for things that I can turn into something beautiful that I can sell in my booth, try to make a little bit of money. This is my side gig. I also homeschool my boys, so you're going to see them kind of pop in and out, out of the videos. Um, most of you guys are used to that at this point. So right now I am upcycling an old calendar frame that you just saw my older boy painting with a black background. Now these little planks that I'm painting right now, they actually fell out of an antique shutter that I was working on and the frame just totally broke apart. So I had all of these slats to work with. So I just repainted them with, I believe, the buttercream color from Dixie Belle. And they fit perfectly into this frame. I could not believe it. I do think I trimmed some of the length off, but as far as the height... I, they fit perfectly all of the way up. I just had to replace one of them with like a little piece of wood that I had hanging out in my garage. And so it just worked out really nicely that it fit perfectly once it was all installed. And so the slats kind of gave it this nice little shiplap look. I'm just gluing them in here with some wood glue. And I go all the way up to the top. And then after this, I clamp them down just to make sure that they're really adhering to that back piece really well. I also staple them in from the back, but I don't show you doing that part. I think my camera must have died when I was recording that footage. So I make sure that they're nice and attached, clamp them down, let them have a lot of time to dry. And then I'm going to take a welcome cutout. It's cut out from wood. I buy these cutouts from Hobby Lobby all of the time. You guys are asking about me. You guys ask me about them a lot and I get almost all my wood cutouts and wreaths from Hobby Lobby. So I'm using the stain color Tobacco Road from Dixie Bell. It is water-based so it's nice and easy to clean up and to use. I can just rinse it out of this brush or just throw this old chip brush away honestly. So I apply it on there, um, just kind of thick, and then I wipe off all the excess with a cloth because I want to let some of that wood grain show back through um, since I'm trying to kind of make this like a more rustic looking kind of farmhouse piece. So once I have that all dry, I uh, just attach the welcome word with my brad nailer. This is the Ryobi brad nailer from Home Depot. I got it for $100 around Black Friday last year, so keep an eye out for a sale price. I love this brad nailer. I use it all the time in my woodworking crafts. I cannot imagine what I do without it. Um, now I am sealing the black frame with some white wax from Dixie Bell. I do sell Dixie Bell on my Etsy site if you need someone to purchase from. I like putting the white wax on a black background because it kind of gives it like an old school chalk effect. Um, I always apply it and then wipe off the excess, and you can even apply it lighter than I did here. I did kind of a heavy hand on it. And then I'm just going to attach a wreath with a gingham ribbon on the top, and this is going to end up being just a cute little piece for your entryway, um, just kind of something with a little touch of character. I've sold a lot of things like these, and they always sell really well for me. I could probably charge about $40 for this in my booth, maybe a little bit more. And there you go. That's my first project done. Moving right along into these rolling pins. I have had these in my booth for a while now and they're not selling. They're just plain antique rolling pins. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, some custom artwork to these. If you've seen some antique rolling pins, they have the painted handles already and I always really like those. So I'm gonna be painting these the barn red from Dixie Belle, just doing the handles on this first rolling pin here. Um, I think this adds a really nice little touch of character and looks really cute displaying in your kitchen now. Of course, they're not gonna be food safe at this point, but I think most people use these uh, just as a display piece. I'm going to be using the Iron Orchid Design stamps to stamp the word pie across the top of this rolling pin so that if you have it standing up in a canister, you can read the word pie on it. Or if you don't want it to say anything, you just flip it back over and it would just be plain with the red handle sticking out. But I thought it would be a nice touch. It took an embarrassingly long time for me to figure out how to lay these stamps down so that it read pie the right direction. I almost did it completely backwards, but I got it to work out. I'm using some permanent black ink here and just putting an ample amount on there and then rolling the pin right across the top. I love how this turned out. It was nice and easy and just like a cute little whimsical touch there for a piece in your kitchen. I do distress it a little bit so it looks, looks a little bit more worn and antique. And there's my little boy. <laughs> and then I distress the handles too because the antique ones always have some worn off paint on the handles. And I love that touch. 
Um, for my second rolling pin, I'm doing a completely different look. I am painting the body of it in this really creamy white from Butter from Dixie Belle called Buttercream. I really like this white. It's a really good antique white. It has a lot of yellow undertones into it, and it's nice and creamy. It goes on so thick. I love the Dixie Belle chalk paint. Once this dries, I'm going to be using a transfer from Iron Orchid Designs. This is the Lemon Drop Transfer. I think it's so, so beautiful. So I'm just kind of looking here to cut out which shape I want to use. I ended up going with this little group of three. Here you can see the tube that this transfer comes in. And I just peel it from the backing paper and then you rub the design right onto whatever it is that you're working on. They're so easy to use. It comes with this little scraper that I'm using here in my hand, that kind of plastic piece. And you just have to rub it on really firmly and then the transfer will release from the paper and release onto your item. I've done this on furniture before. I'm just, I'm just kind of now getting used to them um, and I'm really enjoying working with them. So once you get it on there, you just kind of have to peel that paper away and you're all set. You do probably want to seal it with something. So sometimes I use a clear coat or a wax even. I am cutting out one extra leaf to put when there's just kind of like a blank space on the rolling pin that I want to fill in with this leaf. And that is that for that rolling pin. I think that turned out so cute. I do distress it a little bit just so it looks like it's part of the rolling pin and not like it was placed on there. I just think a little bit of distressing makes it look a little more natural. And of course I want that to have kind of an antique rustic touch so it's always nice to distress. And I just love how this piece turned out. Next up I am upcycling just a very plain old bread box. I had this sitting around in my kitchen for a while, not exactly sure what I wanted to do with it, um, but then I got some inspiration as I was using the lemons on the rolling pin. I thought that would be really cute on this bread box also. So I'm just gonna be painting the front of the bread box. I've already cleaned it really well, but I am wetting it down one more time. Make sure it's nice and clean, and I'm leaving it a little bit damp because that's gonna help the chalk paint go on nice and smooth. I'm again using that buttercream color that I like so much. It's so nice and bright and clean. Um, but not a completely bright white. So I like to have a little bit of that creaminess color in there. Uh, I do two coats on here just so it's nice and solid. And then you're gonna see me take a 320 grit sandpaper after I've painted and just smooth out any of the high points. And there I'm doing some really nice long brush strokes so that you don't see any brush strokes in the middle of the board. It's nice and flat that way. I always try to end with some nice long brush strokes. And then this is me doing my second coat here. Again, nice and smooth, finishing with a brush stroke that goes all the way across the front so it's nice and smooth, and then finishing up with some sandpaper. This is a 320 grit. I buy this in the sheets at Home Depot and then just kind of fold up a little piece at a time. And this is gonna be a nice blank canvas for my transfer. So I'm gonna be doing the lemons again, and I'm gonna have them kind of dangling on either side of the board, uh, making sure first it's nice and clean before I try to do the transfer on there. I know some people like to seal before the transfer. I've never had a problem with doing it straight onto the chalk paint and then sealing. That just kind of goes a little bit easier for me. So here I am unrolling those same lemon transfers, trying to figure out the best placement. And once I do so, I just cut out what I need. And you can see that these transfers are really gonna last me for several projects. I, I don't go through very much at a time and they're just such a nice little special touch. They look truly hand painted once you've attached them on there. And if you missed me saying it before, these are from Iron Orchid Designs. I do not sell these on my Etsy page. I'm not an Iron Orchid retailer. Maybe someday, but for now, um, you're just gonna have to find someone in your area that sells them or find somebody online. I buy them from the shop that I have my booth at, so it's kind of convenient for me to, to buy the Iron Orchid stuff. And I know you guys are always asking me, but I'm sorry, I just don't know where to send you. You can find out online though, if there's somebody near you who sells the Iron Orchid Design line. Now once I have these lemons on here, I just peel off that backing, just like on the rolling pin, and just push down the transfer really well. Use a little scraper, and it's such an easy way to add a ton of personality to an otherwise very boring piece. Now I'm using some DIY, or I'm sorry, some Iron Orchid Designs stamps to spell out the word bread. I'm doing all lowercase, so it's kind of cute that way. And again, the same kind of black permanent ink. Now, keep in mind, you do have to spell your words completely backwards when you are using the stamps because you're gonna flip over the stamp, especially if you're using this thin mount 
sheet. I like to do it on the line. So always flip it over and make sure your design is correct before you go ahead and ink everything. I had my D backwards, um, but once I have everything correct, then I go ahead, I ink it, and just place it right onto the breadboard. I do use my big ruler here to make sure that I have everything centered and kind of straight. And it's nice and easy that way. It always helps to have kind of the tools that you really need. After I have this stamped on there, I'm going to lightly distress the rest of the wood box just so it's not quite so shiny. It's going to give it some rustic charm. And I think you're going to really like the end result of this bread box. It's so cute. One of my favorite things I've done in a while. Now for my next project, I'm upcycling an old picnic basket. This one seemed like a good one to experiment with because we only paid $2 for it and it has a dent in the side. The top of it's pretty rough. So I feel like if something goes wrong in this project, then it's not a huge, terrible loss. Um, I did do a few mistakes right off the bat. So I should have definitely primed this with the Dixie Belle Boss Primer because it's a really good stain blocker. And I needed the stain blocker since I was painting this white with a water-based paint. When I used the water-based paint, I woke up all of the tannins that were in the basket weave and there was some red thread that went throughout there. So all of that old stain in the basket came right back through my white paint. I didn't notice it right away. It took me a few minutes and then I saw that the, some of the red was leaking through and causing some white splotches. It wasn't throughout the whole basket, just in a couple areas, but uh, you know, learn from my mistake. Definitely prime baskets before you go to paint them because they do have a lot of stain in their in the uh, weave of everything. So that was my mistake number one with this. That's okay though. I went ahead to go forward because I was kind of experimenting with these big iron orchid stamps. So this is the sunflower stamps that just came out for spring and I'm going to use them on some tissue paper. I've seen some people do this so that you can get a really nice beautiful stamp design that's not messed up, especially um, if you're doing something that's round and it can be kind of difficult to stamp on round surfaces or for this instance because it had kind of the texture of the weave I still wanted it to stick out really well. I wanted the stamp to look nice and clean So I thought by doing the tissue paper that would help the stamp in the image to kind of stay off of the basket weave and not get lost in there and just look messy and that really did work out well so using the tissue paper was a great idea because it really made my flowers stand out and not get lost in the weave of the basket. So I'm just attaching this tissue paper now that it's been stamped with some Mod Podge. I make sure to do a really liberal amount underneath because you want the, the tissue paper to kind of sink into the weave and look a little bit more natural that way. Um, and this also seals the tissue paper on there. Um, Mod, Podge is a, Mod Podge is a really good sealer as well. So it's nice and durable once it was done drying. Um, so I attached these two flower stamps. These are both from that same packet of stamps that I showed you from Iron Orchid Designs. And once these dried, I had the idea to maybe watercolor in the flowers. I've seen um, the Iron Orchid Design ladies do this on their website. And so I thought it would be uh, a good chance to kind of try to watercolor inside the stamps. Um, especially since I had that bleed through of the basket coming through. So no right or wrong way to watercolor. I'm not an artist by any means, but I do really enjoy um, how watercoloring works and kind of mixing and blending the colors. So I use a mixture of yellows and oranges and light browns in this sunflower. So if you want to recreate that look, that's kind of what I went with. And, you know, just have fun with it. If you think you're not an artist, it's totally okay. There's no, I mean, like with watercolors, you can really wipe it off, especially since it's kind of sitting on top of the Mod Podge in this instance. So I just had fun with it. 
mix some colors. I think it came out really pretty. And then I left the flowers on the back of the basket, black and white, so that at the end you could see kind of the result of either side. I'm also going to go ahead and paint the lid black so that it kind of helps the stamp color pop and looks a little more modern and covers up all the damage that the, the lid had. It looked like it had some water damage on there. So keep watching and you can kind of see how I paint and do the process and I think you're going to enjoy the final look. I really liked how the basket turned out in the end. I do think I prefer the black and white, but it was really fun to experiment with the watercolors also. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Mm. Maybe the birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. Next up, I'm going to be fixing up this jug. I bought this at a yard sale. Actually, they gave it to me for free. It has a big crack in it. It was glued really well, though, so it's nice and sturdy. It just needs some help because, you know, nobody wanted it. It was only marked $3, so they ended up just giving it to me in a big pile. And I shared that in a recent yard sale haul, so if you're interested in hauls, I have quite a few of those, like, thrift haul videos for you to go back and watch. So to start this project, I am covering the whole base with Slick Stick. And I just do paint the bottom for now, but then later I do go ahead and paint the whole entire thing and paint the top too. So eventually I do slick stick on the whole thing, but I don't share that part with you. So I just wanna add that in there. Now while the slick stick is drying, I am making some clay molds. I'm gonna be putting one gallon across the front of this jug, actually just one G-A-L period. Um, I think that'll look really cute and kind of farmhousey, very like Joanna Gaines inspired. So I'm using the Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay, and these are the Iron Orchid Designs um, molds that I'm putting the clay into. These are so easy to work with. The molds are such high quality, um, and the clay is just really nice and easy. I really enjoy working with it. Now my one tip for this is to make sure you're pulling these out while the clay is still pretty wet. Um, I do a jar later on where I let the, dr the clay dry a little bit and it started to crack. These are really fine, like intricate letters. So having them come out while they were still wet gave me the flexibility to pull them out without them cracking and breaking on me. And really they didn't lose their shape much either. The clay did a really nice job of just kind of pulling out without distorting too much. So you can see I'm kind of like wrestling it out here, but it does end up coming out and look at that, nice and clean. The quality of the Iron Orchid Design stuff is just so, so high. So I have my letters ready to go. I let them kind of set out and dry. What And um, I don't let them dry all the way though, because I'm putting them onto a curved surface. I want to dry, I want to glue them while they have a little bit of flexibility so that I can make sure that they glue nice and firm against the surface. I'm using the Gorilla Glue. It's just like a permanent um, super glue. And there you go. I use that tape kind of as just like a border to run my letters across, but I think they look so cute. Now I'm using a baking soda technique with my paint. I'm just mixing about 50-50 baking soda and then a Dixie Belle chalk paint color called Drop Cloth. This is a color I use a lot in all of my crafts. It's just a really nice off-white, kind of a crockery color. And the baking soda is going to make the paint nice and thick and give it just a really good texture, more reminiscent of like a concrete or a clay finish. I love this finish of the paint with the baking soda. I think it looks so good and high end and expensive when it's dry. And I really like it when I'm doing any kind of uh, like a clay glue on like I did here with those with the lettering because it kind of helps fill in the gaps if there's any gaps between the clay that I used and the piece that I'm gluing it onto. And also I thought the textured paint would help hide that crack a little bit better. So in the end, you can't even tell that it's cracked and it looks so much more expensive than how it started out. I really, really liked this project and how it turned out. Look at that there. And I seal it now with a clear wax from Dixie Belle. I love how that drop cloth, cloth color looks, but I did go ahead and finish it off with some white wax just to give it a little bit more dimension. You can see kind of there where that crack was, but really it's hard to tell at this point. 
and I think just like with a sprig of greenery which you'll see at the end this just looks so much more expensive very cool I haven't seen anyone use the letters like that before and I'm really excited to do some more of these in the future Now I'm not going to show you painting this piece, but I did want to show how I got the label off of this cider jar that I also go ahead and, um, and put some clay pieces on. So I use lemon essential oil to get the sticky residue off. I really just let it soak and saturate in there. Then I take it over to my sink, scrub it really well with some soap and water and just like a little uh, scrubby sponge in my sink. And then it's gonna take all that sticky residue off without much hassle at all. So always use that lemon essential oil and you'll see how this one looks in the end. In my last very quick little project, I bought this hanging basket at TJ Maxx. I attached the rope to it and I wanted it to say mail across the front so I can hang it in my entryway and put any like outgoing mail um, into this slot. So I'm just again using the same Iron Orchid Design stamps. I love this letter collection that I have here. Um, putting the letters on backwards on the thin mount using the same permanent black ink and just pressing really firmly on the basket. And that really created this basket into something a little more custom for my needs. And I think it looks nice and cute and farmhousey in the end. Okay, here is your last look at everything, all done. I really like this little grouping, nice and sunny for summertime. I just put some little sprigs of boxwood and lavender in the jars that I finished. So you guys haven't seen this one yet. I did uh, the sandbar color on this smaller jar instead of the drop cloth, which is the sandbar is just a smidge darker, but then I white wax both of them. I love how these came out. I feel like they're very, Magnolia home inspired. I've never seen anyone do like the measurements on there with the with the um, clay molds before so I thought that was just really cool kind of modern but then the the uh, chalk paint with that white wax finish it really makes it look nice and expensive like a real piece of pottery I mean this was just a glass jar and now it looks really like clay and it looks so much more expensive than before I love how these turned out and I think just like a big display of these in my booth would be really beautiful. So I don't think I'm going to put these in my booth right away. I'm going to try to have a few more and just put them all in at once. So maybe I'll do another video showing you kind of the different varieties that I make of these and uh, show you how they all look as like a big collection because I think they'd be really striking all together. Uh, just like a variety of neutral colors. I think that'd be beautiful. So that will probably be coming up soon. I just love how those turned out. Those were really fun and easy. I really enjoy working with clay. So all that was just good fun. The hardest part of these is just waiting for everything to dry appropriately. Um, but obviously the result is worth the wait. Here's how the rolling pins turned out. I think I'm going to be able to ask about $15 to $18 for these. This one's a little bit larger. I just think it's really beautiful. It'll be so pretty displayed in someone's kitchen. And then again, here's that little pie one. I think the kind of rough, soft red is perfectly primitive on these old rolling pins. That turned out really great. Really happy with the bread box. I love the little display of lemons on the side. I got a little smudgy here with my stamp, but I think I think it's okay. You know, it doesn't look like it was supposed to be perfect anyway. It's kind of rough and sanded and distressed, so I think it's pretty great. I like how the wood turned out with just a little bit of distressing. Um, I'm thinking I'll be able to charge closer to $30 for the bread box. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to charge for these. Maybe close to $25 for the larger one and more like 18 for the smaller one, but when I have a variety of them, I'll have a better idea of what kind of price range I wanna do for the very many sizes I hope to do. This is gonna hang on my entryway wall. I like how it turned out. I did go over it again with the individual letters. 
because as you saw, I stamped it the first time on the thin mount sheet, and then I peeled each letter off and stamped them again so I could kind of push the stamp down into the ridges of the basket, and I think that looked a little bit better. It got a little bit darker there, so you could read it easier. I think that turned out really cute. And then I'm gonna move this over. As far as the basket, here is the side that I painted. Uh, it turned out pretty cute. I did do this leaf that kind of wraps around. I have no idea if this is going to sell. This is very much experimental. And I haven't even totally finished it yet because I wanted to give you kind of the two options. So here's how the stamp look looked painted with the watercolors like you saw. And then I did these other blooms on the back side. And they're still black and white. I should probably put something maybe more in the center too. But this was just taking up a lot of time and I wanted to move along onto something else. I do think I prefer the black and white. But like I said, I was having that issue with it bleeding through with the tannins from the original basket. So here's like for some of the red rope, which all of these were kind of like dyed red. That just bled right through my white paint. So that was a big error on my part. Uh, but you live and learn. And next time I will try to do better. I hope that you guys really enjoyed all of today's projects and I appreciate you so much for watching. If you enjoyed these, make sure you subscribe because I have more DIYs on the way and I will see you in the next video. Bye.